everybody. I'm just doing a what's next as far as projects go and also um, wanted to get a little bit of advice video today. Just um, some issues that I'm trying to prevent happen with some, one of my next projects. But I think, uh, so my next project now that I finished the Mohawk Indians from Fife and Drum is to do, as far as a unit for miniatures, is to do my rangers from Krantara. And so I am going to be preparing those over the next bit and getting them ready to paint and do a nice unit of those. Um, but what I thought I was going to do in the middle, partly because I've just done the Mohawks, I do have this display piece of from um, Troop 54, the um, Mohawk. And so <clears throat> with the painting schemes and stuff fresh in my mind, I think I'm going to paint him up and put him on a little diorama base, which I'll talk about today. And um, before I do talk about that, I'll just mention another thing I think I'm going to play around with while I'm waiting for things to dry and cure and waiting on doing stuff is I'm going to also finish um, or start, I should say, painting my thing from Night Models. And uh, I'll be doing him comic style. And so um, that'll be another thing coming up shortly. But those are really the three things I'll be doing over the next little bit. Um, for today's video, and I talked a little bit about this on the show last night, the Musty Wargamer show, when I was doing my sort of painting hobbying update. And so some of this will be a little repetitive for folks that had watched, but I will kind of go in a little more detail today. I'll start just talking about what I've decided on for the plan. And the plan of the project is I want it to ultimately be, sorry, I'm just going to move this down a bit. I want it to ultimately be on this base. And in order to, because I knew I was going to be sculpting a base and I knew I was going to be paint, pouring some resin and things, I didn't really, I've already sort of finished this base in the past to do, to put a bust on it. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up printing just a disc that is slightly smaller um, in diameter than the base to then put on here when finished. Now, um, let's put that base aside for a moment. The plan is to have this log basically tilting upwards in the middle of a river and it's like he's sort of walking across this river essentially. So. I'll just show that a little better here. He's sort of walking this way. And so he's going to just be walking across this river. So it's not really going to be land to land on each side is how I initially envisioned it. I decided ultimately to just say this is in the middle of the river. And it's just going to be um, an epoxy pour that goes up a bit around just showing water and him going across. Now, um, one of the things that I've also decided I'd like to do just for fun is I'm going to sculpt a couple of, out of epoxy sculpt here, I'm going to sculpt some, a couple of rainbow trout just swimming, you know, so they're actually in this water pour, so hopefully you can see them, and they're kind of swimming under the water. That'll just add a nice little effect, I think. And um, one of the, so now to the issue, I'll just remove this this log here. The issue for me, primary issue when doing a water pour for me has always been not making a huge mess and making sure it doesn't leak. That's like the first primary issue. In the past, I've done everything from making a lake and just making sure that whatever I make the terrain piece out of, that won't leak. And um, that usually is a matter of building something out of you know, in my last case, it was building something with epoxy sculpt and then starting with foam, actually, and then sealing the foam with um, hot glue, you know, and around the edges. And I believe then I covered it all in epoxy sculpt. And between all of those layers, like I had no issues with leaking whatsoever. In the past, not necessarily with Envirotex Lite, which is what I'm using. Um, that's this step here. This is what I used last time and it was the best thing I've ever used as far as doing a pour and like a resin for a project. 
I've actually experimented with even just using Minwax polyurethane, uh, you know, and things like that to make clear coats and to do water effects at times. That stuff's fairly thin, and I have had problems with projects leaking. I've, t I've tried to take Plastacard and, let's say, put Plastacard around and use things to try to make a dam, you know, so a barrier, and oftentimes I just find it really hard for it not to leak. And so another complication of this is I did, in printing, designing this sort of base, it's not perfectly round, it is sort of more octagonal, octag it's more of a polyhedral. <laughs> octagonal. Um, it's a it's a polyhedral, um, so it has like flat surfaces. What I decided to do kind of dawned on me that I I felt I should probably make a mold for this to, if I really want to dam this and I want to reduce the amount of separations. Like if I use plastic card, usually there's a seam somewhere that I'm having to then deal with the seam. Not only make it so it's seamless so you don't have like an imperfection in, in, the, in the, the casting when you're done where the seam is but also just having to manage all of that and I just said well I should just probably make a mold since in the same way I made the disc and so what I've done is I've made this basically a one, one millimeter around um, free space which is, still gives me plenty of room on this to sit on here nicely but it's it's also pretty much the same conformation it's just one millimeter bigger and it fits perfectly over it. So then this is plenty big as far as height, like I won't be going this high as far as the water because that would be up to the guy's waist, if not more, I don't know. But I decided that's what I'll do. And I talked a little bit on the show, but so I think as far as the seam of it, you know, and like having things go out the sides, not necessarily the bottom, that's still an issue, I have to address that. But I think this should help quite a bit. Now, this is 3D printed, and what we talked about on the show was how this does have a texture, you know, where the filament is. I'm trying to make things as nice as possible for this mold, and so anything I can do, you know, it's never going to be like 100% perfect probably, but if anything I can do to make it best as possible is great. Rusty suggested, and it's probably a good suggestion, that I just sand the inside of this rather than thinking about sanding the end product or having to do as much sanding on the end product. Just maybe sand this. And uh, so I do have some various grains of sandpaper here um, that I could do that. And I think I'll just try doing that anyway. I, I think there's no real harm in that other than breaking the mold. I don't want to do that. Um, but uh, other than that, um, believe it or not, this took two hours to print. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and so, yeah, so I think I'll, I'll try to sand this and as best I can to, to remove the um, filament lines, you know, that are on the sides, and try to remove that end effect. But then I still have, and then I was hoping that to some degree any sort of imperfections on the surface here that could even be there in the end might get somewhat eliminated by me giving a really light coat of Vaseline around the inside because I, I need to have a bit of mold, mold release as well. At least I feel I do. Um, I feel that this is, by doing this pour, I want to be able to pull this out as best as possible without damaging anything. And so probably something that acts as a little bit of a mold release um, would be good. And so I was thinking just a light coat of Vaseline, which may be thick enough to fill in any micro imperfections in this to then not translate an imperfection to the end product. So that hopefully that helps too. Now, um, what I'm thinking of doing is just taking a piece of plastic card because I still have to make sure that the seal, if I'm going to glue this down on something, I'm not going to pour this just over my desk because it, you know, obviously there's a lot of things I have to do now to make sure this doesn't leak in the sp underneath this mold and get also leak down and underneath this so I don't have a mess of Envirotex like underneath this. Um, so... What I was thinking is I need to glue, I'm going to try to glue this down onto a piece of plastic card. But the thing is is I need to do it in such a way that I can pull it off fairly easily. And so I was thinking white glue, just like a 
just sort of like a um, uh, just a coating of white glue around the edges because white glue is particularly on on the plastic I think it would be fairly easy to pull off and then it's easy to white to sort of dissolve as well like just with water and stuff like it doesn't it's easy there's a fair bit of cleanup I think that should be somewhat easy I'm interested in people's thoughts on that if they think there'd be something better that I would do than that um, I don't want something that's going to be too thick and like um, like hot glue or something that's going to take up space and like raise this and cause like some sort of conformational imperfection on here. I suppose I could also just do Vaseline and just leave it in one spot and just put some Vaseline underneath it onto this thing just to create a seal and that almost is in some ways more appealing to me. So if I have let's say Vaseline or white glue like on plastic card and then I put this over it and I'll put this in a dedicated space where I don't have to move it. Um, Rusty suggested that I do blue tack, you know, around the edges on the bottom here. And that was I think that was a good suggestion. But I'll be quite honest with you. I'm not really a big fan of blue tack for almost anything. I, I don't know if it's that I always just get cheap blue tack. But I just don't find that I have as good of a... This stuff almost leaves blue on my fingers when I work with it. But I just find that I don't have as good of a success using blue tack for almost anything in the way I see other people do, like putting their miniatures on things and just using it. And it is fairly thick. What I was thinking is I might run a bead of um, hot glue around the mold onto the paper because it's really easily ripped off and just when you're done, like I can just pull it off. Like it's just hot glue, like will just peel right off of it in the end. And I think I have had some success using it just to create a seal, and so yeah, I was I was thinking that, and I don't know what it, you know other people's thoughts are. Ultimately, um, I want to use, and I'll just raise up again a little bit. Ultimately, I want to use Envirotex Light, which is I think is great stuff. I've only used it once, and it worked perfect. I didn't get any bubbles. I followed the direction, like because oftentimes this stuff creates bubbles. Um, I I think that these resin epoxies, clear resin epoxies, they all can behave a little differently depending on the brand you use. And I still have limited experience with Envirotex Lite. For those of you that have experience with Envirotex Lite specifically, have you ever sanded it in the end and polished it? And I'm just curious because when I'm done, like my expectation is that I'm going to have probably maybe three quarters of an inch to a, a half to three quarters of an inch of resin going around this. And if the sides need to be polished or, um, or anything done to them, I'm just curious what you guys have done because everything that I've read quickly online seems to indicate that it's not great to sand um, this particular product. People primarily use this for bar tops. That seems to be the number one thing that people that people use, like the large batches of this product for. Plenty of people use it in the hobby, you know, in the hobby. But its industrial purpose seems to mostly have been to create bar tops. And so when you hear about all of that, they usually will say to seal it with another clear sort of coat of a different product over it when you're done. Um, particularly if you need to like kind of repair stuff, they will talk about sanding it to kind of remove it, but not to polish it. That's not to say it can't be done and that people in the hobby community don't do it for their purposes. And that's kind of what I'm asking people here. If any of you do use this, I just kind of want to know in advance when I'm done in my finished product before I take sandpaper to it or I try to buff anything out, like what you guys with this specific product have done. Um, I would appreciate that. So um, that's sort of where I'm at with what I'm going to be doing next. Um, I would really appreciate feedback. Um, I think at this point I will start painting and sculpting my fish and painting my figure and I'm not worrying about because I'm kind of doing this sort of in my mind um, in advance like thinking trying to think to the end stage of what I'm trying to do. Um, I, I don't think there's anything, that, any harm at this point from me getting going forward with my painting of the project. Um, and I am going to sand this, as Rusty suggested. I think that would be good. And so I'm going to do that. But I'm interested in 
the mechanics of the pour and the different products that I've talked about and what I'd like to use to both protect it from leaking, leaking underneath, leaking outside, um, and also not creating imperfections in the end product of the resin. Like, you know, like I talked about either through this, through the lines on this, or even the things I choose to seal this down with, if they get into the critical space between this and this, whether it be the edge or in here, um, if any of that gets in there, then it's gonna displace some of the water effects and I don't want that either. Um, and that's why I was kind of thinking the hot glue around the edges on the bottom and then just gluing it down but not having anything inside. Um, the only thing is the Vaseline, if I put too much and I had actually kind of gooped in there, then it would actually potentially displace the water effects. And so I have to, it would have to be like an extremely wiped on thin coat of Vaseline and nothing, no sort of uh, gob, gobs, goblets, is that a word? Goblets, you know, on the edge, <laughs> droplets. <laughs> um, okay, well, um, thanks for watching everybody. Um, I'm kind of excited about these projects coming up. I'm really excited to get started on the Rogers Rangers. Um, actually, I just gave it away, but I am gonna be painting them as um, Rogers Rangers. Yeah, I'll be, so I'll be going green on those. That's what I'm planning on doing. Sometimes I like to be different, and I th there's another troop, I believe it was called Gorham's Rangers, if I remember correctly, that, were, that, that came prior to Rogers Rangers as far as their being formed. And uh, they wear primarily a brown outfit. Um, at least that's the way it's recorded. And I'll get more into my discussions on, on how I'm going to paint these guys and why I decided and w the research I did um, in another video. But, uh, but yeah, I can just start talking about this forever. <laughs> okay, everybody, uh, appreciate your thoughts on this and hope your week is ending well. Take care.